Today I'm going to talk about ventricular septal defect. It is a birth defect of the heart in which there is a hole in the wall that separates the two lower chambers, which is also called as the ventricles of the heart. This wall is also called the ventricular septum because it divides the left ventricle from the right ventricle. So this ventricular septal defect is an acyanotic congenital heart disease, which means that the child will not present with cyanosis, so no um, bluish discoloration of the skin. And in this ventricular septal defect, we see in this picture over here, the blood flow flows from the left ventricle to the right ventricle because the ventricular pressure in the left ventricle is higher as usually it is needed to pump blood to the whole body. So there is left to right shunt of the blood. And this ventricular septal defect is the most common among all congenital heart disease as it consists of 30% of all the congenital heart diseases. For clinical features, it depends on the size of the heart defect. We compare with the size of the aortic valve. So if this ventricular septal defect, if the hole is same size or larger than the aortic valve, it is considered a large defect. And it is a small defect if it is smaller than the aortic valve. So in small ventricular septal defect, VST, usually children are asymptomatic where there are no symptoms. In large VSD, they can present with these symptoms like heart failure, failure to thrive, especially in second to third months of life, recurrent chest infections, poor feeding, diaphoresis, which means sweating during the feeding, and also dyspnea, where there is shortness of breath. For physical examination, in small VSD, we can hear a loud pan-systolic murmur at the left sternal edge, and also palpate for the thrill at left sternal edge. Whereas for large VSD, the pan-systolic murmur is also at the same area but it will be softer and sometimes there is no murmur heard. And there might be a loud P2 with pulmonary hypertension. The reason why small VSD has a louder murmur is because the hole is smaller so the turbulence of blood flow is greater, so causing a greater heart murmur heard. And for physical examination, we should also look for the cardinal signs of heart failure like tachycardia, tachypnea, hepatomegaly and also cardiomegaly. For investigation, we can do chest x-ray. It is normal. It looks normal for small VSD. And for large VSD, we can see cardiomegaly and large pulmonary arteries like this picture over here and also plethoric lung fields. For ECG, in large VSD, we can see left ventricular hypertrophy or biventricular hypertrophy signs. For, and we can also do echocardiography to see the anatomy of the defect and also to assess the hemodynamic effects using the Doppler. For treatment of VSD, if it is small, it usually does not need any treatment. And if it is large, we can divide the treatment into medical or surgical treatment. The reason why small VSD does not need any treatment is because usually it closes spontaneously in the first year of life. So for large VSD, for medical treatment, we can try to control the heart failure and give oxygen therapy, give fluid restriction and also nasogastric tube feeding if the infant is acutely unwell. We give anti-heart failure drugs like furosemide, spironolactone and others, and also prophylaxis for subacute bacterial endocarditis. For surgical treatment, we can do transcatheter closure using the Amplexer occluder, as seen in this picture over here. The main aim of the treatment is to close the hole in the heart, in the septum, to prevent the blood flowing from left ventricle to right ventricle. Another option is to use Decron or PTFE patch to patch on the hole to block the blood flow. And also pulmonary artery bending to reduce pulmonary hypertension. That's all for this video. Thank you.